What is he doing way up there? He's gonna make the jump. He's gonna make the plunge. And there he goes. Noise cancellation, believe it or not, has been around for quite a while. This surprised me since the mid-1900s. The first applications were aircraft-oriented, and rightfully so. It's why I bought a pair myself. This is the Bose QuietComfort 25 headset equipped with an inline microphone and remote, powerful and clear speakers, and of course, noise-canceling technology. It works, by the way, very well. But how exactly does it work? How do you just cut out ambient noise? First, we have to address sound waves in general. They're compressional forces. Anything that makes a sound is compressing and expanding the fluid around it. Picture it like a moving pressure wave. But it requires a medium, and that's why outer space is virtually silent. So instead of this, you'd actually hear this. We can map these forces using sine waves where the peak of every wave is its compression and the trough of every wave is its rarefaction. The amplitude represents the strength or loudness of the sound, that's basically how tall a wave is, and the wavelength represents the frequency or pitch, that's how stretched out a wave is. This for example is an extremely low bassy tone, whereas this would probably make your dog freak out. Different animals pick up different frequency ranges, and those typically narrow as we age, separate video. For now, let's depict an oversimplified high frequency jet engine tone that you'd likely hear in an airplane. Its peak-to-peak -peak amplitude is this, let's say, and its wavelength is this. What noise cancellation technology seeks to do is first detect the sounds being produced by objects in the environment via microphones on the outsides of headsets like these, and then to reproduce those sounds again in ear but with a twist. And that twist is offsetting the phase by 180 degrees, essentially shifting it over by one pi length and radiance. This new phase is called the antiphase, so in essence, the replicated sound wave produced by this speakers in this headset will look nearly identical to the wave produced by the turbine. However, since the antiphase is being generated here, destructive interference occurs. Where the ambient peak occurs, the antiphase produces a trough, so you're actually hearing two sets of tones in your ear. The first is being produced by the speaker, that's the antiphase, and the second is being produced by the object in the background. This equal but opposite pattern exists for the entire span of the wavelength and yields a virtually inaudible tone, i.e. noise cancellation. Think of it like addition and subtraction where compression occurs for a particular tone, only positive numbers exist. Where rarefaction occurs, negative numbers. If two overlapping waves exhibit equal but opposite amplitudes, then the resulting amplitude must be zero. At a peak and trough, let's say two minus two, that result is zero. Somewhere to the right, one minus one equals zero, and here, well, it's already zero. That is wave interference in a nutshell. Now, the technology isn't perfect, but neither are the tones being produced by objects surrounding us. Predictable patterns are best mitigated. Airplane noise is constant for the most part, so it's easily canceled, but if the person next to you blares music out loud, headphones like these won't do well at suppressing that noise. It's unpredictable and all over the place. By the time it figures out the pattern, it's already changed. So the applications here are wide and varied, but it's not foolproof. So don't buy these to tone out your barking dog or your roommate's loud television set, rather buy these for a nice long flight across the Pacific, or a room in which an AC unit is extremely loud, only for places in which tones are rather predictable and just annoying. A brief rundown of these headphones here, by the way, they sound great, even better with noise cancellation turned on. It takes a single AAA battery on one side and you're good to go, otherwise you can still listen to them plugged into a source, just without ANC. One thing though, you'll notice a bit of added pressure in ear once you turn ANC on, and it's something that I can't really explain in words, it's why headset reviews on YouTube are kind of stupid, but I encourage you to go to your local tech store, try a pair on that's on display, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But are these still worth it? Oh yeah, even for the hefty penny I paid, I'm paying for the name, I understand that, but I'm also paying for the quality, so no buyer's remorse here. I purchased this set out of pocket in an airport actually, but I still do recommend them to frequent flyers and audiophiles alike. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all with the quality, the sound quality that you get from these, but I do think you might be disappointed with the price. It just depends on how much you want to spend, how much you're willing to spend for a name brand product like Bose, you are paying partly for the name and partly for just the quality of the product in general. As usual, we can find this product linked in the video description. Check it out, let me know what you think. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life. Like, be sure to click subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.